What's up everyone, Alan Thrall here, back at Untamed Strength. I just got back from Sacramento State University. I got to record some training footage of Mary Peck. For those of you who follow weightlifting, you're probably familiar with Mary. She's one of the top 63 kilo weightlifters in the nation. I got to sit down with her and her coach, Tom Destazio. We talked about strength and weightlifting in general, and also kind of looked at how Tom trains Mary. Before we get to the training footage, I want to let you guys know that Mary is hosting a snatch and clean and jerk seminar workshop here in Sacramento, California. For those of you in the Northern California area, you've got to check it out. It's April 22nd and 23rd. If you can make both days great, if you can only go to one day because of scheduling, that's fine too. I will put a link to that information down below in the description area. And Mary's going to talk a bit about it at the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy this footage. Let's get to it. My name is Mary and uh, I compete in Olympic weightlifting. Uh, my most recent meet was uh, the American Open Series 1. It was in Reno about three weeks ago. Um, I had a couple PRs, um, 96 kilos in the snatch was my best. Um, that's a competition PR. I clean and jerked 116 kilos, which is also a PR, and then my total was 212, which was um, a competition PR by four kilos. Um, so previously, before Olympic weightlifting, I was a gymnast. Um, I started when I was about four, um, competitively since about six. Um, did it through college, went here to Sacramento State, competed here. Um, I've been done about five years, so right after gymnastics, I started Olympic weightlifting. Um, I dabbled around in it a little bit before my senior year of gymnastics, competed unattached um, and unofficially at one competition before my senior year of gymnastics. And um, then afterwards, he asked if I wanted to continue and I said yes, so that's where we are. Name's Tom Mastasio, uh, coach uh, over here at Sacramento State. One of my lifters is Mary Peck. The sport of Olympic weightlifting is the sport in and of itself and it has to be practiced. You know, the snatch and the clean and jerk are two skills that are, you know, um, very technical and they're highly dependent on technique but um, at the end of the day you got to be strong in order to execute those lifts and uh, execute them uh, correctly you know and with speed and precision and all those things that everybody wants out of a, a great Olympic lifter um, but at the root of that uh, is going to be strength. Uh, strength is always going to be the driver that's going to force the snatch and the clean and jerk upward. Looking at strength um, you know, strength is our ability to produce force. Uh, how do we best develop strength is kind of where I start out every program. Um, you know, uh, in my opinion, a stronger athlete is going to be better at whatever it is that they do. And that includes Olympic weightlifting. I don't think Olympic weightlifting is entirely different from any other sport and the fact that the snatch and the clean and the jerk are skill dependent movements that have to be practiced a lot. Just like you have to practice pitching a baseball a lot, practice shooting a foul shot a lot, you have to practice the snatch and the clean jerk a lot. Now, in order to get stronger, I think that the, the, at the heart of that, you look at the squat, the press, and the deadlift, um, and the bench press are kind of my key movements. Uh, being a starting strength coach, I'm a huge believer in all of those, and I think that uh, those are going to be the main drivers in order to get stronger. The way I break it down is that what I'm looking at is how can we make it so that we're taking the athlete and getting them stronger as a whole and then from there we're going to practice the skill that they're looking to improve on in the case of an Olympic lifter, the snatch and the clean and jerk 
and how can we make it such that those two are both moving upwards. Like if I were to have like a new lifter or somebody who's um, starting out with me for the first time, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them squatting, I'm gonna get them pressing, an overhead press, I'm gonna have them deadlift, and I'm gonna have them bench press first. Uh, they have to have a base level of strength in order to perform the lifts. You know, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna teach somebody the power clean on day one, I'm not gonna teach them how to snatch on day one. There has to be a requisite level of strength that that athlete has. That requisite level of strength is going to be relative to the athlete. You know, I think that you know, if somebody comes in, they're a big, strong guy, they're gonna have a natural level of strength and we can probably hit the ground running a little bit faster than maybe a weak 13-year-old uh, girl who might have trouble picking up the bar. So you know, I'm not gonna um, start everybody at the same level, but I am gonna teach them those basic strength movements that are gonna be the foundation for my program. A, a, a lot of times people do get kind of caught up in like the relative strength to explosiveness and their, they, you know, their, their power snatch to, to back squat ratio and this and that. At the end of the day, you have to get stronger. Strength is going to be the driver no matter what the situation is. The reason I do Olympic weightlifting is I love the sport. Um, there's something about just getting stronger and beating yourself, which is pretty cool, and then um, the competition on the platform is always fun. Um, just how intense it gets on the platform, I think that's a lot of fun. Um, but just striving to get better and improve yourself, I think, is the main reason why I do it. And um, yeah. Yeah, Mary Lobar squats. I know it's kind of faux pas. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why this has become such a contentious debate. Um, from what I've seen as a coach, um, and with my athletes, all of my athletes that I coach, they low bar squat unless there's something um, that prevents them from doing so, which is very rare. Um, it comes back to, like we talked about, strength always being the driver. And um, strength is a general adaptation. And in order to get stronger, there are tools that we use in the weight room that are going to help us get strong. In my opinion, I. I have tools that I use that are going to allow the athlete to get strong generally when strength is a general adaptation and we have the best tools for the job that allow for that. All right? and one of those is the low bar back squat and you know, the, the, I know that that's, um, you know, it kind of sounds like a broken record but the main tools that we use are the low bar back squat, the deadlift and then the overhead press and the bench press. Right now, that's not to say that's all that we do. You know, there's different times of the year where we use other lifts, but those are my indicators and also my drivers for strength. If those numbers are going up, I know that she's getting stronger. She can produce more force. And as that stronger athlete, coming back to what we talked to in the beginning is, now they can better practice their skill. So whatever it is that they're doing, whether it's being a volleyball player or an Olympic lifter, whether they're trying to run track, whether they're just trying to, you know, have better daily living activities, they're going to be able to perform at a higher level. So we use the exercise that in the weight room that we think are the best tools to allow the athlete to get strong. Low bar back squat is one of those. Uh, the reason why we use the low bar back squat is um, for me, number one, I, I see it as the most technically sound form of squat for the back squat. Um, it, it, you know, in terms of biomechanics, in terms of just overall, uh, you know, general physics uh, is the most logically thought out way to squat. From there, you know, it also is going to utilize the most amount of muscle mass. So, you know, we, we want to, when we're squatting, we, we want to train the most uh, muscle mass possible. You know, the squat is our number one driver for strength. And the reason why we use the low bar back squat is because it's going to strengthen the most musculature. It's the only exercise where we can use what we call hip drive. It's the only exercise where we can utilize hip drive and we can strengthen the posterior chain in, uh, to a very high level and then also strengthen the rest of the lower body. We can basically you know, train the whole, uh, whole system in, under a very heavy load and push for a very, very long time to bump that number up. Um, you know, with the high bar back squat, it's a little bit different angle of the torso. We don't, in my opinion, you don't utilize quite as much muscle mass, um, and it's not as safe of a form of squatting to me. Um, you know, that's, that's what we've found success with. Other people may not feel the same way, but it's, it's something that 
Um, we saw a really big change when we switched over from high bar to low bar back squat. Her, her numbers took off. Um, she was stuck around 100 kilo clean for a long, long time. Uh, her back squat was just stuck. She doesn't really have the greatest body proportions for a high bar back squat, so it was just kind of, she'd always get pitched forward. It was just kind of, we were just kind of stuck. So I was like, all right, well, we're gonna try this. And we went to low bar back squat and we saw some great results. And, um, you know, from there we, we've, we've constantly used a low bar back squat. It's kind of the number one lift to, to drive up all the other lifts. That's my, my main in indicator as to whether or not she's getting stronger. The deadlift we use because it's a pull. You know, you, you, the, at the end of the day, Olympic lifting is you know, you, you, the snatch and the clean are both explosive pulls and in order to pull he heavier weight higher, you have to be able to pull heavier weight, period. You know, you're not going to be able to clean uh, a weight off the ground that you can't pick up. And But also the other thing is with a stronger deadlift, you're going to have a little bit more room for error, which obviously we don't want. But, you know, at, at times that happens when you're Olympic lifting, you may get pulled forward or you may get pulled out of position. And it gives you a little bit more room to correct and it, because of the fact that you're stronger and you can you know, get into position, maybe force a position that you wouldn't be able to fix if you weren't as strong. And it's also going to help you stay healthier. Um, I think if you program the deadlift properly and you use it in the, the, the right way, if you're um, stronger and in your pulling strength, when, when you are doing lots and lots of Olympic lifting, lifting, a lot of pulling, you need to be sturdy. You need to be able to handle a lot of stress and a lot of pulling stress. And when you're stronger, you can handle a lot more. The deadlift is a very, very potent lift. It, it can, it's very taxing, but it allows for uh, some, you know, fantastic return on investment in terms of just making you a stronger puller, really strengthening the hamstrings, the low back, and the glutes. Um, and it can also really help reinforce great, you know, good positions for uh, the clean and the snatch. You have to have a strong upper body. That's why we bench press. She, we bench press a lot. We, it's, a, some, it's a tool that we can use that is going to help her to get stronger and you reap a lot of benefits from and you're able to train it really hard and you know it's not an, as taxing as a deadlift, it's not as taxing as a squat and it's also strengthening the other half of the body which is important. You know, if we're, it's not just legs, there's an upper body component to lifting. So we, we do, we train the bench and the overhead press a lot and we use it for uh, a lot of those reasons and the fact that we have to get stronger in the upper body but then also we can you know it's another way to help stress the whole overall system to get stronger as an organism like i think about like charlie francis he he talked about why he had ben johnson bench press you know you know tra track coaches are always like well why does bench ben johnson bench press that makes no sense you know he had a huge bench and it's like well he's a sprinter you know you know because he it was another tool that he could use to help strengthen the overall system you know, it was a stress to the nervous system. It was something that he could, he could use to continually strengthen the overall organism without having to constantly squat or deadlift or jump or do plyos or things like that. It's another tool that strengthens the overall system of the athlete that we can use to help make them a stronger being in and of themselves. For some reason, in, in the sport of Olympic weightlifting, general strengthening has become more people. I think are doing it, but now everybody just—it's like kind of like the kind of the new fad of like oh, like bodybuilding. And I was like, well, bench press isn't bodybuilding. Like that's a that's a that's a track measured lift that we need to get stronger at. Like the overhead press, you have to get like we don't just go do some sets of ten at the end to go you know. Know, work the shoulder like we get stronger at the overhead press we get stronger at the bench press those have to happen we need to get better at chin-ups we have to get better at rowing like everything has to get stronger in order to get better and those are all important crucial aspects of it it's not just kind of like a oh off to the side you're done you know go do some some fun bodybuilding you know it, it, it's this is a strength sport this is a strength training and it's it's, it's cool to look big <laughs> i mean i mean you want you know but i mean Body, body composition is, you know, you want, you want more musculature. Like, yeah, you don't want to lift yourself out of a weight class, but, you know, the, the more, I think, lean tissue you have and the better chances you are to move more weight overhead, and that's the, that's the name of the game.
Um, I think that motivates me the most to get into the gym every single day is just improving. Um, so one main thing that I focus on is improving my performance from the week before. Um, so for example, Monday if I have jerks and I jerked up to 125 the next week I want to improve by a kilo. Um, mental toughness is also huge. Sometimes um, at times I'll feel weak or discouraged or um, whatever it might be, lazy, I don't even know, something. Um, the biggest thing I come back to is mental toughness. Um, I just tell myself to be tough, sort of change my mindset, and most of the time I can turn things around. Um, it's really hard to be motivated every single day, but I think the biggest thing for me is, like I said, to improve each week, um, no matter what the lift is, um, even if it's, you know, accessory work, dumbbell row, making sure I do five pounds more than I did the week before, um, knowing that I improved. Um, also just considering or um, thinking about all the goals I have of making the Olympics, of breaking American records, of making certain teams, um, that'll keep me motivated. Especially when I'm in here alone, sometimes it's hard training alone. A lot of people do it, everyone does it. Um, but when you're in here alone, just thinking about your goals and improving from the week before, I think are those, those are the main things that keep me going um, and keep me motivated. And Tom really helps my coach. Um, sometimes I'll break down um, and a lot of times he'll, I don't know, yell at me or whatever it might be. Sometimes I don't um, do well with yelling. I think every athlete is like that, but a lot of times I do. So he, he knows me well enough to help me out. Um, but I think a lot of it just comes from deep down. It's um, your coach can't do everything. I think they're there to help, but um, yeah, a lot of it just comes deep down. And Some goals that I have for this next um, quad is ultimately make the 2020 Olympics. Um, more short-term goals. Um, I'd like to qualify for the 2017 Pan American Championships and also the 2017 World Championships. I'd like to break the American records in both the snatch, the clean and jerk in total. Um, so the current American record for snatch is 100. And I'd also like to break the clean and jerk record. I believe it's at 125 right now. Um, I'll have to do 126 to break it. Um, and then obviously the total as well. Um, so on April 22nd and April 23rd, I'll be hosting a clinic. Um, Saturday will be from 2 to 4, and we'll be doing a clean and jerk clinic. And then Sunday will be from 12 to 2, and we'll be doing a snatch clinic. If you can make both great or one, um, whichever you can, that'd be great. Um, we'll also have the, it, it'll be downtown at a Fitness Rangers, and we'll have the link for you to sign up.